So if you ever wanted to take your pictures and turn them into beautiful embroideries that really look like the picture, well, today we're going to play with palette 11, specifically photo stitch, and most importantly, we're going to share tips and tricks to stitch it out beautifully on the Altair. So stay tuned if you ever want to take your pictures and change yourself into an embroidery artist. I'm Kathy and this, this is Sewing Tech Talk. See, we have a giveaway for today's video. We have this great pack of uh, sewing uh, of embroidery thread from Madeira. Every time you like, share, or comment, you're entered for a chance to win the thread. And as you'll soon see, you can never have too much thread. Today we're going to play on Palette 11 software, specifically Photo Stitch 1 and Palette 11. Now we're going to create the embroidery from a photograph and you'll see it's pretty simple. But what I think is key is we're going to take that embroidery that we create and we're going to stitch it out on the Altair. Because being able to create it is one thing, but having all the techniques to get a really good stitch out, I think that really completes the process. Turns out that my doctor is a great photographer. We're going to be using his for photographs today. Make sure whenever you change something in embroidery, you have permission to use that photograph. Either it's yours or someone that's given you per permission because that's just the right thing to do. So now I'm going to come down to the software and what we're going to do is an image of Rosie. I'm not going to use this one. When you choose an image, what you want to make sure you have is you don't want a lot of teeny tiny detail in there. So if you have a like a group of a bunch of people and they're really, really tiny, it's not going to make the best photo stitch ever. So this would work, but I have a different image that I want to play with. So if you see up here on this tab up here, where I'm kind of highlighting with my mouse. This is the home tab and this is the workspace for palette 11. I have these other little rooms I can go to. Here is image. When I select that it changes to different selections. This is what we're going to be playing with mostly today. So I want to open an image. So when I click this I can choose one from I've saved on my computer. I can scan one or I could even copy and paste from my computer. From the file I I put all of my little images from the doctor in one folder. Make sure you can find the folder when you put them in there. And I'm going to play with this version of Rosie. There she is. And I'm going to say open. Now there's Rosie. Now she's sniffing the ground right now. Let's rotate her so that she's face up. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to come over to what's called the Stitch Wizard. And there's lots of ways for the computer software to automatically change your image into a great embroidery. We're going to play with Photo Stitch 1. And if I choose this little arrow right here, I have four different choices. I'm going to play with color. But just real quickly, sepia makes it look like an old timey photograph with browns, gray, black and white, gray, mono, just picks up the shadow and does a single color. We're going to play with color today. When I choose that option, the computer is going to bring my image in to the first of four little areas that I can play with. This one is select mask. So what I can do here is I can crop out the parts of the image that I don't want to use. Why is this important? Well, maybe your photographs are not the best. Maybe there's parts of it that you don't want to show. Maybe there's detail in the background that it's not going to stitch out very well. I chosen a clipping mask that's just a square. I can there's all kinds of different choices as you can see on the left and you can also just cut out the one image so that you just have that animal person flower whatever. So here we go with Rosie. I'm happy with her the, with the cropping that I've done, but I'm going to tune up her image just a touch. She's beautiful right now, but the computer's going to come through and it's going to pick up the different parts of the image. So maybe I want to sharpen that up a little bit. So if I click this over to the right one, it kind of brings her in a little bit more focus, sharpness. I can change this. I can add more shadows to her. I can bring up the contrast just a little bit and I think I really want to take up the saturation of colors just a little bit because remember the computer is going to use this image to pull all the different colors from. I'm going to say okay and you can play with these till you're happy with what you got. You can pass it through the program as many times as you need. So I'm going to hit next 
and that's going to take me to where I can choose the size of Rosie. Now I've chosen this white box out here. I've chosen the nine and a half by nine and a half square frame for the Altair. If you have the say the Solaris you can go bigger. If you don't have the machine you can go smaller. For photo stitch you kind of want it to be as big bigger is better because it's going to give you more opportunity for detail. So I've chosen that nine and a half by nine and a half inch frame and what I can do is come down here and easily say fit to page. This makes the image the exact size that it can be for that hoop. She turns out that she's a little bit over eight and a little bit under nine. Perfect. That's going to be the size that I want. Remember, photo stitch is kind of stitch intensive. There's a ton of little stitches in there, so the more you, the bigger you make it, the more you're going to have to stitch. Now, what's going to happen is the, the computer's going to render it in an image that it's going to use to create the stitches. We're not in stitches yet. That means we can play with exactly with this image we have here. Now, what you can do is you can come up to here, the thread chart selection, and you can pick what you have. Say you have, say you have a lot of Floriani thread. So if I choose Floriani, I can come down here and say, I've made a change, show me what that change looks like. If you click update preview, it changed, it changed Rosie just a little bit. It made her only in the Floriani colors. Say you have um, more Robinson Anton or more of another thread company. You can choose that thread chart and it's going to show you uh, exactly what it looks like exactly in those thread colors. Now, maybe I want more detail. Maybe I want to go with 15 colors because, hey, I'm willing to change thread that many times. I can choose 15. I've changed it. Show me what that looks like. And it's going to give you maybe just a little bit more detail. Pretty cool. I can ask for more detail by going to find. Now remember, every time you do that, it's going to add more stitches and it's going to take a little bit longer to embroider. There we go. Takes it a while to do it, but it has 15 colors. I've upped up the, con the, uh, the detail just a little bit. I can still come in and change a little bit of the brightness. I can change that and see what, what that looks like. Maybe I like that a little bit better. Oh, I don't think I like that so much. So I'm going to take everything down just a little bit and say update. And you can play with this as much as you want. Just keep going and seeing what you're going to like. Oh, maybe, maybe I like this a little bit better. Keep changing. Or you can ask the computer to show you some choices. I can go select from candidates and the computer's going to generate a whole bunch of different images. Mine's going to be the one that's in the middle. It's going to show me nine different choices and you don't have to play with the buttons at all. Maybe you like this one. Pick that one, say okay, and it's done all the work for you. Pretty cool, right? So now, here's something I do because I I want the software to work for me. I don't want to have to work for the software. You can select your, um, when you say, for example, I have this thread chart chosen, Floriani. So what I'd be doing is I'd be going to my sewing machine when I send this over to my sewing machine and I'm finding all these different colors. I'm going through all my thread to find them. What if I don't have this color here? Maybe that's not a part of my thread collection. So what I did is I want to make sure I have the colors that that I tell the software it can choose from. So what I've done is I've came and in the software you can tell it I have these colors and you can create something called my chart. My charts all the colors I have because I may have that full collection of Floriani thread but maybe I have some other threads that I bought before. Now if I'm doing a an animal like Rosie and I see that I don't have a lot of rust or those pretty colors that Rosie is, I could have gone to the store ahead of time, bought the colors, told the software that's what I wanted to use. That's better than the software telling me you better find this rust color and I'm running all over town to find it. I tell it what I have. At the end of the video I'll show you how I did that. So there's my colors that I have. I'm going to hit update preview and it's going to render Rosie in the threads I have. All I have to do is go find all these cool threads among my collection.
Now, I'm going to hit finish. Now, watch Rosie. She looks pretty here. The goofy thing about the program is when it renders it onto the page, when it creates it in stitches, it never, it, this is how it's going to stitch out, but it never looks good when it finishes it on the page. So don't let this next image fool you. Now, while it's doing that, it's creating a whole bunch of stitches, probably at 115,000 stitches. What I did is when I go to the, to the sewing machine, to the embroidery machine, I printed out my list of thread colors that I own. It's my personal shopping list from my sewing room. So what I did is I went up to the up here and went up to the flower, you can choose print and you can print out the list of the colors that you have. You can even jot them down if you don't even have a printer handy. So I printed out my thread colors and that's my shopping list. And these are the colors that I own in my collection. Whole bunch of different brands, whole bunch of different colors. And I'm gonna take these to the Altair when we stitch this, stitch out the beautiful Rosie in just a second. Now, let's send it to the machine. The great thing about Palette 11 is it is the conduit to go to the wireless Altair. The Altair is a wireless machine, which means it can pick up an embroidery from the air, but you need Palette 11 to send it to that machine and any of the BabyLock wireless machines. How do you do that? Well, I'm going to come up here to the Home tab. Remember the Home tab? And in all my choices up here, I'm going to come over to the right. Do you see where it says send? I'm going to click on that. And if I come down here, it says send to network machine. That's its talk for. I'm going to send it wirelessly to, and there's the Altair. If you have a bunch of wireless machines, good for you, but you'd have a list of different machines here. When I click Altair, what's it's going to do? Through the magic of sewing technology, it just sent that machine two rooms down to my Altair. That's pretty sweet, right? So it's finished outputting the data. What we're going to do is we're going to go over to the Altair and we're going to pull up Rosie and we're going to stitch her. And I'm going to show you some real neat techniques for getting the most beautiful photo stitch. Ah, it's one thing to create it in embroidery, but let's stitch it out and make it sweet. Think you're going to like it. So I already stitched out Rosie once. And how did I do this? Well, I used a, whatever thread palette I used in, um, in the software. And as the colors came up, I chose colors that look like they matched. So you can totally do that. If you don't want to go through the trouble of putting your threads in there, when a color comes up on the machine, match it to a color you have, put it in there, and, and I think it turned out acceptable. So you can totally do it that way. But I think we can make it better. So we're going to compare the two when I get this next dog stitched out. So remember, what I did is I printed out my color numbers and I pulled my threads because I knew I had them all. I sent the design wirelessly from Palette 11. So I'm going to go to Embroidery and touch the little wireless symbol. And just like magic, from two rooms away, here's Rosie. There you go. There's Rosie. Want to hit Set. Now the machine's going to bring in the embroidery in whatever color palette you've selected within the machine. So notice it brought all of those colors in to Robus and Anton uh, Rayon. Now I have different colors. So this is what I'm going to suggest. You can just go by your chart and pull up one thread at a time, but this is a great way to check your colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, for example, pull up this first color, which is a sulky rayon thread. And I'm going to go to sulky rayon. There's sulky. I'm going to touch number. And I know that's number 1145. 1145. Okay. Now it brought up that color. Now I can check and see. If anything goes wrong, you can see what it looks like. And this takes a long time to stitch. So if you get part way through, you don't want to get messed up on what color you're at. So I recommend it only takes a little bit to go in and change all the colors to the colors that you have getting ready to go forward. Now, how do I set up the, uh, the fabric? I like to use a dark colored canvas because it's easy to find. It's very relatively inexpensive and it's going to be mostly covered with the uh, embroidery, but there are going to be little bits that peek through. I like the dark color to peek through instead of a light. It's going to be okay either way, but that's what I kind of like to do. 
Now for stabilizer, I like to use an aqua set. This happens to be a dark color, but a light color works just as well. I use two layers because there is a ton of stitches in any photo stitch. So I use two layers and when I put it onto the back of my fabric, I put them on crossed. So one goes this way and the other orientation is that way. And you're going to want fabric to come all the way around the hoop and tighten up your hoop. This needs to be stabilized to within an inch of its life and then it'll stitch out flat for you. So remember, you're also going to use quite a bit of bobbin thread, so you may want to invest in some pre-wound bobbins that fit your machine. So one more thing I want to see before I go to the embroidery screen is I'm going to come up to settings and the background of my embroidery. I'm going to change that to that dark color canvas that I already have just to see if I'm going to like it that way. So I'm going to go to the page number eight, I'm going to come to embroidery background color and I'm going to choose the black canvas that I already have. Now if I've used a dark blue or any other color, I'm going to change it to that as well. So when I hit OK, it's going to show that dark background behind my embroidery. I think after I change all these colors, I'm ready to go. So I'm going to hoop up my fabric. Now, if you were actual time watching this, this is, let's see how long this is going to take, all 103,548 stitches is supposed to take about 206 minutes. So if we film this in actual time, it'd be longer than Gone with the Wind. So I'm going to film it as we go through the magic of video. You're not going to have to wait that long. So I'm going to hoop up get everything ready to go. I'm going to do the embroidery and then when I come back, we're going to compare this one. See if I did it a little bit better. You be the judge. So we're just finishing up. Whew. That was quite a that was quite an embroidery adventure, but I think think she turned out really really good. So let me show you. Here is my new Rosie and let me show the comparison with my other Rosie and I think it's quite a difference. So I hope you agree if you take a little bit of time, put in your own thread chart, put in the colors as you're going, you won't get lost and you can get some pretty spectacular results. Use it on whatever you want. It's a little stiffish, there's a lot of stitches, pillows, they're beautiful framed. What a great gift for a friend. Now, I promised you I'd go back to the computer and I'm going to show you real quickly how I put my own threads in. It's a pretty simple process. The more threads you have, the more time it'll take, but it's not hard at all. So let's go back to the computer and we're going to put the, our threads in, my threads in, you put in yours. I'll see you right at the computer really fast. So we're back at the computer. Let me show you really quickly how I created my own custom thread chart. I'm done importing data. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the little flower that says the symbol for palette 11. There's a hidden menu so if I left click on it, I can come down to the options down below. When I click on that, I have a whole bunch of choices. I'm going to edit the user thread chart. So I click on that and I'm going to select over here my user thread chart. I'm going to select my chart. There we go. Now say I've acquired these little threads. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find those. These happen to be Madeira Rayon. I'm going to come to the thread chart over here, find Madeira Rayon. And the one spool is number 1181. I simply go down to 1181. There it is right now. I click on that. I hit add and it now put it into my thread chart. Now, say there's a brand that you can't find a thread chart for, you can literally create one all by your own. So you can come in, you can find the color that it is, 
choose the color, name it, and you can put in colors that there's not an existing thread chart in there. So I hope you can see, oh my gosh, say you're doing a big project where you want all the embroideries to match, just use your thread chart because it's the thread that you already have. That's using your software to the fullest and that's the software working for you instead of you working for the software. So I hope you enjoyed this little journey through Photo Stitch. Um, the software in combination to your machine, it's unlimited. And Palette 11 software not only works with the Altair, it can export a format in just about whatever sewing machine kind you have. Mm, it really connects wirelessly to that Altair. So George, maybe there's a Babylock wireless machine that they want to get? George, take it away. Tell them what they could get. Thanks, Kathy. That was an incredible presentation. Don't forget, you can click on a, the link and download Kathy's lesson guide on today's presentation. But I want to take a couple moments to share with you my favorite features on the Babylock Altair. I believe the Altair is dollar for dollar the most advanced machine on the market. There are machines that sell for thousands of dollars more that do not offer the same features. You know, the embroidery features are incredible. The nine and a half inch by 14 inch embroidery area, you can really uh, expand your horizon with embroidery and there's 494 built-in designs. You also have that 10.1 inch color screen that gives you all kinds of editing capability from color to sizing to also, you can actually take designs and do automatic stippling around it. It has 30 built-in fonts and five jumbo monograms. Now with the fonts, you have all kinds of editing capability. You can even take and put in a, a name or a saying and then do an applique border and turn it into applique automatically. It also has the IQ Designer. Now this is an app that you use your smart device like a phone uh, or an iPad and you can send an image, a graphic image to the machine and it will turn it into embroidery instantly. The embroidery is amazing, but what about the sewing and quilting? This machine has 11.25 inches of space and five inches of height, so you can fit even the largest quilts into this machine. It also has automatic fabric sensors that will sense the thickness of the fabric so it will set the right pressure and with the automatic tension, it gives you perfect fabric control from heavy denim to very sheer fabric to working with elastic or even a t-shirt collar. This machine truly controls the fabric with perfection. But also it has the digital dual feed and that what that does is that is a belt driven uh, uh, walking foot system that's controlled by the motor of the machine. And you can control even like here with this minky perfectly. So you have so many amazing features with this machine. But what about an amazing deal? The MSRP, the manufacturer suggested list price of this machine is $10,999. And it's worth that for all the amazing things that it does. We right now have it on sale for $79.99. And we're offering free shipping across the United States. Plus we have interest-free payments of $167 per month. That is, makes this machine very affordable. But wait, that's not all. For a limited time, and while we have it in stock, we are offering a special bonus with your Altair purchase. So first, we're gonna give this beautiful set of 63 spools of a polyester embroidery thread. This, the beautiful shine and quality of this thread is quite amazing. Also, I'm including uh, the Babylock Ultimate Stabilizer Bundle. This has the, uh, the most popular rolls of stabilizer from wash away to cut away in different colors. And this will enhance your embroidery to give you a better quality. I'm also including the Babylock Altair 
inspirational guide. Now, the instructions on this machine is wonderful, but what's different about the ins inspirational guide, it is written by Babylock educators, assuming you know nothing about the machine. So it takes you through every aspect, giving you uh, full color. It's, it's over 300 pages of full color description, step-by-step -step description. And if you complete this uh, inspirational guide, you truly know everything on this machine. We're including that. Plus, we're gonna include a online membership to Babylock's Love of Knowledge. This has hundreds of videos that give you step-by-step -step details on how to use the machine and also do techniques. This is invaluable and you get a membership to this as well. You also get our famous rose gold scissors. Uh, this, these scissors are wonderful, both the shears and the embroidery shears. But last and not least, we put together a very exclusive design bundle by Anita Good Design. It has 17 different collections and it comes with over uh, 400 design files. And it's truly amazing the variety you get with this. So all this, which equals over a $1,600 value is free with your Altair purchase for a limited time. Now we will run out of these supplies. So this is while supplies last. So click on the link to order, or you can call us at 1-800-865-9664. You can email me at more so at AOL.com. But don't wait, this deal will surely end. But if you have any questions, again, call us at 1-800-865-9664. Bye for now.